Peter Mandelson has returned to the business department he was removed from ten years ago. Yesterday he spoke with Tony Blair, who gave his personal blessing to this extraordinary political third coming. Clever, feline, not as devious as they think. Challenging, mischievous, far-sighted, funny, intriguing, charming, very charming. He didn't actually honestly make much impression on me at the time. Very kind, warm person uh, with a peculiar love of dog. It is impossible to imagine a braver politician than Peter Mandelson. They underestimated me because I am a fighter and not a quitter. Peter Mandelson was born into the Labour Party, grandson of the former Deputy Prime Minister Herbert Morrison. Harold Wilson was a neighbour and family friend. I think Peter's background in Hampstead Garden Suburb is rather interesting because the Labour movement and Hampstead uh, have, have a different relationship. On the one hand, there's Hampstead Village, which is all about the intellectuals, which is all about Michael Foote and Douglas Jay and the Frognall set and sort of esoteric debates about the nature of social democracy. And on the other hand, there's the Hampstead Garden suburb element. There are the Mandelsons, there, there's Harold Wilson, there's the Herbert Morrison. Rarefied debate in Hampstead Village only gets you so far. Hampstead Garden suburb, I think, is about getting things done on the ground. The ability to get things done was in short supply in the Labour Party when Peter Mandelson became its Director of Communications. We will win. It is true that on the day he started at Woolworth Road, one of the uh, employees tried to kill a colleague with rat poison. And it's true that the, he had a chair in his office which should have four legs, only had three, and was kept, of, kept up by being buttressed against the table. And there was this odd pot plant that was just dying. And it was utterly, utterly chaotic. Peter Mandelson revolutionised Labour's presentation. Out went the red flag. In came the red rose. Private Eye nicknamed him the Prince of Darkness. All-powerful orchestrating events with a flick of his finger. The idea that Mandelson was the first spin doctor is nonsense. Just Mandelson was better at it, and I think partly because he had a very powerful strategic sense. Elected to Parliament in 1992, Peter Mandelson became increasingly close to Gordon Brown and Tony Blair. I was there when Gordon Tony Peter was very much a triumvirate and it was very much, you know, offices were very merged. It was hard to see where Peter's office stopped and... You know, Tony's office started and vice versa with Gordon. At five past eight this morning at his Barbican flat, Mr Smith complained of chest pains as he was having a bath and collapsed. Following the death of John Smith, Peter Mandelson sought to persuade Brown to stand aside for Blair. But he knew that Gordon would see this uh, as a great personal betrayal. I remember him saying to me, gosh, I think I'll have made an enemy of him for life. We are back as the party of the majority in British politics. The new Labour leader, with his trusted adviser always nearby, renamed the party, rewrote its constitution and moved it into a shiny new campaign headquarters. Peter was an incredibly powerful force on, on what they regarded as the war room uh, of, of, of Millbank. And he was there on the ground. He was, you know, in the press office. He was in the rebuttal unit. Uh, but then he'd retreat to his office at the back and occasionally he'd put up these rather cryptic quotations from the likes of Machiavelli or Sun Tzu, uh, author of The Art of War, about, you know, when the, when the enemy is on its knees, it's at its most dangerous. Labour won with a landslide, and Peter Mandelson soon proved himself an able minister. I remember civil servants at the DTI saying really they liked three Secretary of States. They liked Nicholas Ridley, they liked Michael Heseltine, and they liked Peter Mandelson. Why? Because they all made decisions, and civil servants don't mind if they agree with them or not, the Secretary of State made decisions and they were close to the centre of power. And that's what civil servants want. 
but the revelation that he had borrowed money to buy his house from the millionaire Labour MP Geoffrey Robinson, who happened to be under investigation by his department, put his political future in jeopardy. I get a phone call from the Prime Minister. He says, have you seen the papers? I said, no. He says, Peter Mandelson's in difficulty because he's received a loan from Geoffrey Robinson. And I say, well, he may have done, but he is vital to the government and vital to the new Labour project. I mean, we should hold him at all costs. And the Prime Minister said, I suggest you read the papers again. Peter Mandelson resigned, but spent only a few months on the backbenches. His time back in office proved almost as brief. Second time, I think Campbell and Blair panicked. Hinduja passports, money, Peter Mandelson. Oh dear, we can't go through this again. He'd only just come back into government as uh, Northern Ireland secretary. But the inquiry, the leg inquiry afterwards, acquitted him of all the things which were said about him. Uh, so it was unfair, and I put it down to panic. Many politicians end their careers in Brussels. It was the making of Peter Mandelson. Being European Trade Commissioner is a huge job. I think it was very valuable for Peter in giving him the confidence to play literally on the world stage. This requires political skills of quite a high order, and Peter was good at it. Um, not popular, but very good at it. I always thought that when Peter came back, it was a bit like um, a band from the 80s or 90s reforming. I'm very proud to have been invited uh, to serve in his government. Um, it's not what I was seeking, and it's certainly not what I was expecting, uh, but nonetheless, it's a, a great opportunity and a great challenge. Soon he was all that stood between Brown and the abyss. He brings him back and puts the fear of God into the Tories, rightly so, in my view, and uh, uh, you end up, a year or so later, Mandelson's virtually the last man standing. Who would have thought a day? It makes me smile every time I think of it. Mandelson's back, and Mandelson is de facto Deputy Prime Minister. <laughs>